I'm sure I've mentioned on this channel before that I'm a dry fly fisherman at heart, but I know, and everybody knows, that dry fly fishing in the wintertime can be a pretty tough game. You usually have more luck with nymphs and streamers, that's no secret, but sometimes, just sometimes, you can have a good day of dry fly fishing even in January or February. And that usually means midges. And my go-to dry fly for midges, or midge clusters, is the Griffiths gnat. Now, the standard Griffiths gnat is a really simple tie. Just a peacock hurl body with a grizzly hackle palmered up it, tied on 18s or smaller. And I've tied and fished plenty of these over the years. But lately, and by lately I mean over the last couple of years, since my eyesight is not as good as it used to be, I've gone to tying mine with an indicator. Just a small tuft of white, maybe fluorescent orange or pink, Zelon, Antron, maybe a Parapost, or what I'm gonna do for you today, an orange calftail. Now, if you do tie this with an indicator, you'll wanna be careful not to make it too big. It might just make the fly a little bit top heavy. But you'd be surprised at how little of an indicator will really help you see this thing 20 or 30 feet out. But this pattern, the Griffith snat, even with an indicator, it's a really simple tie. So if you plan on doing any winter fishing this year and you don't wanna give up on the dry fly, put a row of these in your box. So there is in the vise a high-vis Griffiths gnat. Now, I'll tie these on 18s and 20s. You could certainly go smaller, but 18s and 20s usually work for me. So it's not the smallest fly in the world, but there it is next to a dime. It's a pretty small pattern. Now, I am stepping my thread down. This is a 12 aught, which is about a 50 denier. And I will catch it in on about the first third or so. Now this is the high-vis part. This is orange calftail. You certainly don't need to keep it natural. You could go with a synthetic. You could do a, a Zelon, Antron, any kind of nylon, parapost, whatever you want. And it doesn't have to be orange. It could be white or, or pink or whatever. I just like this orange and I've been doing it like this. Don't worry about the lengths yet because we're gonna break convention in a little bit and we're gonna trim it at the top anyway. Take a few wraps right here, and I'm really not worried about a taper either, but I am gonna prop it up. So lift all these up, let's get a few wraps up under it, and then I am going to kind of treat it like a parachute. Just put a few wraps around the, the post. Not a lot, because you know, we're it's not a parachute. We're not trying to uh, wrap a hackle up it, but we do want it bunched together. So after you do that, go ahead and take your thread to the back and take some of the smallest grizzly dry flock hackle you have. This is about the smallest feather on my whiting cape, and it's a pretty decent cape. So you're probably not going to get any, any feathers that are shorter than a hook gap, but that's fine. We can go with a, a gap and a half for this length and trim that butt end if you need to, or just, you know, bury it. I didn't leave too much, so I can get away with just burying it. And now here's something cool. The body is Peacock Girl, and you can use your scraggliest stuff. This is a pretty shaggy looking hurl from my bunch, and it's gonna be just fine, because not a lot of this is gonna be seen by the fish. So just catch this in, and then we'll park our thread right up here in front of this post. Now we'll wrap the hurl first. Just take it all the way up there and tie it off. And that body does not look really good, but you know what, I don't think it's gonna matter. So go ahead and wrap your, your hackle up and pretty close together. This is kind of the signature of the fly all these fibers really close together because this is what makes it float. Now we might have a little bit of cleanup around that head right there, but let's go ahead and web finish it. We'll take a look at that in a second. Now obviously this wing is way too long. What I'd do I just bunch it together and, and snip it a little bit taller, a little bit higher than that hackle right there. And it doesn't look like much, and you're right, but you'd be surprised that 
how little will really help you see this fly, you know, more than 20 or 30 feet out. And another secret I'll tell you about this, I don't use head cement. I have too much of a tendency to clobber that eye if I try to put head cement on it. But I will take my tweezers and then just try to pluck some of these out to make sure my eye's clear. And I think we're fine. We got a vegetable fly right there. Very simple pattern, but this thing can be a lifesaver in the middle of winter. So that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.